Hello, welcome everybody. Uh, we've got a we've got a big group of hosts here today for an important project that um, that we're so excited to share with you. You know, we're about a, a year into having cosmic towers in North America, and uh, the the cosmic towers are a, a major force, and they influence people and they influence life. And one of the things that has come out of uh, this project for a year is a uh, cosmic tower lakes and light project. Um, and uh, that was initiated by uh, Mike T in, in Boston. Mike just waved so everybody sees sees your video there. Yeah. And um, we're going to get to Mike in, in a few minutes. But before we do, we want to take a little bit of time to talk about what the Cosmic Tower Project is. Guys, I'm in a new location this morning. When that when those dirt bikes just went by, did you hear them? No. OK, fantastic. I can listen to them by myself and uh, no worries. Um, and um, so before we do, we just want to set set a little bit of a context. So we're going to start um, by talking with Nico about what, what the Cosmic Tower Project is and just get the, the baseline for those who might not be familiar with it. And then we'll get to some of the various people who are very uh, deeply specialized in different measuring techniques, and we'll talk about them. But let, let's just start right there, Nico. So you know, what is the Cosmic Tower Project? Well, uh, the Cosmic Tower Project, it's basically Harold, Harold Thiers uh, invented the Cosmic Tower. And uh, while by many it's seen for a solution for individual issues, right, to neutralize or harmonize EMF, uh, to recharge, restructure the water, all the many benefits uh, people might have heard of in our video from the Cosmic Towers, for me, at the essence, the Cosmic Tower is really about creating a more harmonious environment because the big Cosmic Towers actually affect large ranges. And it's all about harmonizing the energies in our world with the premise that if we live or any living organism has within it already the blueprint to thrive as long as we have a harmonious in, environment. So for me, the Cosmic Tower is about building this network that spreads our harmonious energy in which all of life can thrive. And it's done through the Cosmic Tower, which is, you know, based on the on toroidal field, the toroidal field that's created by using special living water and, and a crystal. And by connecting all those towers are connected so we're basically creating a harmonious grid of energy um beautiful and um would you go a little bit deeper on a particular aspect that i know you're passionate about about this which is that a lot of people come to us and say will it protect me from this or that and um just just kind of fill in the picture around blocking emfs and subtle energies and and that whole dialogue because i think it's a really important point yeah, I, I think because of science in the last, you know, 100 years or so, we see ourselves as separate from the environment. So we see things that happen in the environment. And what we want to do is we want to separate ourselves. We want to block ourselves from the environment. But I hate to say it, you're not separate from this environment. You live in the atmosphere of the earth. You are a part of the earth. So we cannot have this like a uh, separatist view that we're the separate entity that's independent from our environment and as long as i can shield myself from the environment i am safe no you're an integral part of the environment and if the environment is not doing well the outer environment your inner environment isn't doing well and the other way around is also true. If our inner environment is not balanced and healthy, the outer environment is, is not doing well. So when it comes to the challenges that we're faced with, with uh, non-native EMF, et cetera, we can never solve that by just shielding ourselves from it because our entire environment is affected. And that's why I love the Cosmic Tower, because in order for us as individuals to thrive, the entire environment has to thrive and all of nature needs to be healthy. And that's one of the things I like about the Cosmic Tower. It's just not, hey, I got my little gadget. Now I'm safe. No, we're actually helping 
and supporting the entire environment that we are all a part of. And same for our emotional, for our thoughts. We all, a lot of us believe they just happen in our heads and that we, that it doesn't affect anybody else. Yes. Well, it absolutely does. We all share a spiritual and emotional and, and a mental plane. So each of us taking responsibility for what we believe goes on in, in here affects everything. And the other way around, we are affected by the collective also. So that's what I really love, that we're addressing all of it holistically. Yeah, that's really beautiful. So I think there's an opportunity. So um, I didn't put much structure around the whole call. So guys, this is a 90 minute call where we're nine minutes in. And um, so you can just kind of see that as the timeline. And I'm sharing that with you panelists also. So you get a sense for how long to to present the part that you've been asked to talk about. Um, but let's take a, a moment here to get some audience involvement. And the, the question that I have that I'd like to see people um, type in the chat is, um, do you have a methodology for um, measuring subtle energies? And if you don't have one, just put in no. And if you do, put in what it is. So like, you know, John Hegg, you're gonna speak today about the Hawkins consciousness scale. And, you know, Tara, your approach is kind of really homegrown and intuitive. And so, you know, each of us, like, so that we get a sense of who's here and how how many of us are advanced in this area. Like, Nico, you've been studying biogeometry, so you might list that and a couple of other things. So, guys, just go ahead and put in the chat, do you measure measure subtle energies at all in your life? If, if it's a no, just put no. And if it's a yes, put the methodology that you use so we can get a sense as a community. Um, great. So, Deborah's excited to learn. She doesn't yet. That's wonderful. Deborah, um, thank you for going first in the chat. And, and um, you know, let me share with you all that the point of coming together is to amp this up together. So all we're doing is we're starting the conversation with a baseline. Like, where are we with this? And, you know, part of the reason that I'm surrounded by such extraordinary people like Tara and Nico and John and Theo and Holland and Zane and Mike is that these people all measure subtle energies and I've allowed myself to get lost in that a little bit. It's, it's part of why I think the Cosmic Tower Project chose me because it wanted to help me develop this part of me. So all of you that are answering no, like I'm the, I'm the cheerleader for, for understanding what that feels like. And it's just a spectrum and we're all one. So as you're, you're you know, take in these answers and see what, see what we're all up to together. And um, Nico, let's let's talk a little bit for a second about left brain, right brain, um, and you know what it's like to um, to come from one of those strongly, and you know how this call and this project can be a help for that. Like, start to build the bridge, and then we'll talk about the the lakes and the and the rivers next. Yeah, I think we live in a society that's very much focused on logic and being analytical and what mainstream considers science, right? But we have a completely different um, part of us that, that already knows, that's intuitive through, through the heart. And for me, like, I love both. I like, I was a very left brain person for 36 years all about science and then uh through my mother's passing woke up like spiritually and then started experiencing that side and for me like both of them are they're complementary and i do still love science and understanding it but i also have, have learned to to tap into my own heart and the wisdom that we all already have there and our connection uh to to the source that all of is and you know i am by no means an expert in biogeometry i'm just a novice starting to learn um about all these techniques but what i really love about biogeometry is because it really brought together my you know wanting to understand and being more analytical but then ultimately the measurements and that all being about the right brain, about the feeling, about tapping into the field, about it being experiential. So I think in in our world, we have this, oh, this is science and this is spirituality. And they're two different things. I think then we're already lost when we make that separation because it's all one whole. And I think our mainstream 
science basically focuses in on such a small part of the spectrum and just ignores everything else. For me, what I've noticed by uh, learning of the work of Ibrahim Karim and many others that if it's truth, spiritually and science beautifully uh, blend together and there is no difference. There's simply a different perspective, a different way of, of looking at it. And for me, biogeometry specifically, I think is beautiful if you come more from an analytical point of view, but ultimately it's to bring you back to the feeling, to the heart within, to where there is no separation. Yeah, that's um, it's really beautiful. Um, Nico, when you get a minute after this next question, perhaps you could um, find the YouTube link to the Art of Playfulness series. And this was uh, specifically created, guys, to help Nico lead us in a conversation about coming at the cosmic power from our heads and then softening and finding a way to relate to them from our hearts. And it's the it's a three-part series that we have to support you guys to um to deepen it if you're, you know, specifically on the the cosmic tower path. But the question that I have for you, Nico, because you've you've studied the the brain so much and the subconscious. And you know, let's say somebody's sitting here on this call and their answer to measuring techniques is no. And they're interested and they just don't know what to do next. Um, how can you help them recognize that their wings have already grown and that they're in the nest and have the courage to, to step out a little bit? Well, I, I think all of us naturally we're, we're connected and, and, and we, we feel right. And we all intuitively know and some of us, for some of us, we're just more aware of that, of that subtle voice. In, in the background, not that lo loud voice from the left brain that seems to like dictate uh, most of our lives. But for me personally, how I rolled into it is just because it's fun and I'm curious and I just want to play and figure out things about nature and, and play with it. So I would say, don't be too serious about it, but just be playful and invite it in. And when you open yourself up, whatever is right for you will come to you. Because there are as many different paths as there are people. So I'm never going to say you have to do this or that or not this or that. We are just giving you options and takes what resonates with you and 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 leave the rest. And uh, don't compare it to others. Just, um, you know, follow your own journey and what comes on your path. And whatever is right for you, you know, just be playful with it. Have fun with it, you know. That's, that's so good. I think you hit the a home run on that answer, Nico. And, you know, I'll offer myself up in contrast. So, you know, since Nico was a little boy, he's playful and curious and he engages with this conversation from his heart, from that playfulness. And, you know, I am serious and driven and, 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 you know, want to do things right and have all these, these programmed ways of being that have been a part of my existence. And so part of my resistance to being able to, to fully open to engaging with subtle energy has been engaging it from trying to do it right. And it's a, it's a tough thing to unwind, but you know, you just, you just stay with it. You just keep chipping away at it. And um, you know, I, I, um, I shared with Nikos that I would, I think I've finally become EMF sensitive. Um, and um, just, I think it was yesterday. And he said, well, actually, Patter, I think you're just becoming sensitive. And, um, and so there's a, there's a softness that's washing through me now that is a culmination of just sticking to it. And I, I offer that internal experience as um, courage for those of you who feel like you're at the beginning of the journey. And I really want to support you. So Follow Nico's playfulness. It's a really, it's a really good direction to go. I've been doing it since I met him, and um, it's going really well. So, okay, let's tie it to the um, the project. Let's tie it to this new emergence. So, we have the Cosmic Lakes and Rivers of Light project, and you've attended a bunch of meetings. So, just as a brief overview right now of what it is before we get into some of the measurement techniques, can you tell us what that project is? Uh, yeah, well, actually, it was Mike that brought it um, to us, and I was really excited about it because I also believe that the lakes and the rivers are very important. I mean, we're all water, 
and we have a resonance. It's like the water of the earth, I believe. They're, they're so, so important. And what excited me is actually that somebody from the community uh, brought this project because really getting the Cosmic Towers out there, it's just one phase. But for me, what excites me is people consciously working with their tower, working with other methodologies and not seeing those as separate. Which one's better? No, they all make each other better. And they all have a synergy with each other. One of the things when biogeometry came on my path first, I didn't pay attention. And then with the cosmic tower, it came back to me. And I was like, oh, this is really cool because we actually get to measure some things. And I love that, that it's like the ability to measure with biogeometry what your results are or what the effect is of something on a living organism that really like excited me so when mike brought it and said hey let's see how the two play together i was really excited because right at that time i was in egypt with john and john and i were already playing with the cosmic towers and the biogeometry together so it came right at, at the perfect time and then i love it that it's the community the cosmic tower is a community project and it's about us as a community being stewards again for our environment taking responsibility and helping our environment versus cannibalizing it and biogeometry is also about that and has that same as those same principles so i just love yeah, that the two came together and that other people are stepping forward in leadership roles and really helping take this on. That really excites me. Yeah. Speaking of which, I just asked Mike to unmute and Mike, I, I um, you know, we just want to recognize you for starting this project. I know you're very humble about it, but but thank you from all of us for for starting this. It, we, we appreciate your efforts and um, I'd love to hear your voice for a second before we bring in the various measurement techniques, even if I'm not following the agenda that I said I would. I rarely do anyway. So yes, yes. I'm, I'm here, but I'm here. And thank you for thanking me. It was actually the uh, team effort. And um, again, without uh, Nika, Tara, and John, uh, and our uh, cosmic uh, lakes and the rivers, which decided to join us, this project would be going nowhere. So it's, uh, it's a teamwork. Yeah, so, so thank you. Can... you. Can you tell us what your hypothesis was or, or how that formed, what it, what what came to you about uh, that? Yeah, well, uh, basically the original idea uh, came to me within uh, two weeks uh, time frame after I received my uh, CT75, which is a, an interesting coincidence, I would say, uh, at this point. So I just felt a gentle kick that after completing two levels of uh, biogeometry, uh, why don't to sort of to assign a sort of uh, master thesis project uh, to myself and start doing something. And the idea came that uh, we have a local lake nearby. Uh, let's try to see if this lake can reach uh, the energetic level of the power spot. Uh, I'm sure uh, many of uh, the participants of today's calls visited such places, such places as Machu Picchu, Stonehenge, uh, maybe. Uh, pyramids in pyramids in Egypt, uh, ancient uh, temples. Basically, uh, those um, places uh, which are defined as power spots. Basically, they feel different. So basically, they emanate this special energy quality, which I decided uh, why not to try to uh, replicate this. Let's let's give it a try. Let's play with the lake. Um, asking uh, the permission first, and uh, I've got a strong yes from this uh, local lake. Um, and uh, the way you do it, I think John will address it um, uh, in, in within the next few minutes. You basically muscle test if you don't know how to do this, this technique and uh, see if this energy system, which we call uh, a lake, uh, actually is being a living, a living system, so conscious being. Uh, is um, is uh, sort of is okay with that, uh, and since I've got this yes, I started to uh, again use my knowledge received in biogeometry classes and uh, basically applying the corrections to improve this energy quality, which biogeometry uh, calls BG three. I think Holland will explain a little bit further what it is. Yeah, 
let's let's uh, let's slide there now. That's that's perfect. Thank you so much, Mike. So, um, so guys, what we're what we're finding is that lakes and rivers are our companions in raising vibration, and that you can have the vibration of a sacred spot on Earth in some place that just appears kind of normal. So, you know, in introducing the next person, I have a little story about that. So. Holland Franklin um, is a gifted feng shui practitioner, and she's she's so deep in energy in so many ways. It is difficult. I don't want to put a label on her, but I'll just tell you some of my experiences. And by the way, as I introduce the panelists, um, each of them has different businesses related to the sides of where the conversation is today. And if you gravitate to any of them, feel free to message them privately and ask for their number or email us and, and ask, and we'll connect you. Every home that I've moved into um, I've um, gotten in the habit of sending a plot plan and some fish, various measurements and sending them to Holland. And Holland then would look at the house and, and recommend the simplest remedies that would substantially change the energy of the home. And so I went to this home in Lubbock, Texas, and um, Lubbock, Texas is not exactly what I would think of as having Machu Picchu type vibration. You know, it's kind of flat dirt and like particularly this time of year march and april i vowed to never be there in march and april again because when the wind blows the sky actually turns from blue to brown it it all the dirt goes up in the air and you don't see anything other than dirt so this is the place that i was living in and i was looking to settle down there for a while and i went to a house and i called holland from outside the house before the realtor got there and i was like holland why does this house feel so good and she said i don't know how you did it but you found a house with energetics like Machu Picchu in Lubbock, Texas. I was like, I'll take it. And, um, you know, my first night in that home, I had a twin size mattress on a rug and that was the only thing in the house. And I had a dream and I saw uh, cones of white light coming through the roof and healing my body. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is the place. And, you know, I later learned that the cul-de-sac that the house is on each car that goes and turns around drops chi on, on my house. And so, um, you know, who knew? So Holland's really amazing with, with measuring those things. And she's well-skilled in a variety of techniques. And we have her on the call today um, because of, you know, great wisdom that she has. But specifically, she has influenced a lot of us with regard to biogeometry. And um, Holland, we love it if you can um, introduce us to the concept of biogeometry. And with a specific orientation in the conversation about how we might be using that to measure the impact of rivers and lakes and interactions with the cosmic tower. Like, how is that possible? Good question. So um, let me, first of all, just tell everybody that there's a good website to go and look at about biogeometry. Um, so this is the main website, biogeometry.ca. Although if you've forgotten put in com, you'll probably get there. And this is uh, Dr. Kareem's main business, which I think is still located in Canada. And one of the reasons, well, there's several reasons to go there. One is that there are some good overviews of biogeometry there, including some of the, the projects that Dr. Kareem has done over time, where he took areas, cities, particularly in, I think, Switzerland, you know, that had issues and um, implemented a few very simple geometric shapes and caused, for instance, the, the negative effects of cell towers to go away. You know, people who were all over this, you know, a couple of towns who had gotten ill from an initial cell tower after the devices that he he installed, which is, you know, careful shapes and careful positioning, using what he calls the physics of quality, he basically transformed the, the adverse effects of the cell towers, you know, the, the um, Sorry, forgetting my terminology, but um, it's a carrier wave. It basically caused the carrier wave coming from the cell tower to carry benevolent energy. So everybody started to get well again, once again, in these, these towns. And this is what is possible, you know, if you understand anything about the physics of quality. And so when you, you ask about um, measuring, also on the website, there are some some pendulums, special pendulums that you can use. The physics of quality is much like, if you can understand something about a rainbow, <clears throat> you know, color, you can understand something about the physics of quality. 
what one of Dr. Kareem's major contributions to comprehending energy is um, the concept of BG3. So, which means stands for biogeometry three. And it is three different uh, qualities of energy, which correlate to the rainbow, which are found at sacred sites. You know, it's an indicator that's, that something very, very benevolent is going on that supports life energy, supports everything progressive that we know of. When it's there, people flourish. And the thing is that it is actually everywhere. <laughs> But um, and this is the thing I I know the least about how to how to explain really well. But um, it's it's literally everywhere. Um, but it it's just like every note is everywhere, but it's not resonating. Basically, the um, the way of employing the geometry causes what's in the subtle fields that's benevolent to resonate, and then once it, it's resonating, you can feel it and it's feeding you. I hope that made some kind of sense. You know, getting back to what Nico was saying about it's, you know, it's all, it's all unified. Yeah, I think it makes some kind of sense. And, you know, let's check with the community before we move on to the next <laughs> measurement technique. Does anybody have a question? We don't want to go too deep in a biogeometry conversation, but we do want to make sure that you guys are recognizing the value of it. And when we start getting multiple people getting results with biogeometry, why we consider that important. So does anybody have a question as, as we go through each of these next um, introductions of concepts, I invite you to either type questions or just raise your hand and, and ask. Um, and I can tie this together really quickly too. You know, basically right. we want, there are ways, simple techniques, like what you experienced at your house in Lubbock for causing BG3 to be there and to feed you. You know, so the Cosmic Tower is one of the things that's, that's doing this, but there are also other very simple ways which we can learn without a lot of trouble. And so that's the idea of what Nico was saying earlier about um, usual um, relationship to EMF, for instance, is to is to block it. You know, it's a fight or flight kind of relationship to it, which has its place. But the other way of working with this is to increase life force, because the more life force you have, the more resilience you have. You know, so whatever's going on around you, if you're being fed by wonderful things energetically, then you have the ability to return to your own most perfect balance. You know, your environment supports that, your diet supports that, the cosmic tower supports that, and so forth. And these energy qualities can be can be measured with these pendulums that are on the, the website. And so anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. It did. It did. That was great. And we don't seem to have any questions on it. We'll, we'll leave it open, guys, as we unfold the measurement techniques. If you have a question, just put it in the chat or raise your hand. And um, and um, Nico, do you have anything else you want to ask of Paul? Do you feel like we uh, we got the biogeometry out there or any comment you want to add? Um, one of the things I really like about the biogeometry is that in the measuring devices, often people think it's like mental dowsing where you ask a question but that's not the case with biogeometry. It's like through the, through the resonance with the different shapes that you do the measurements. And I just want to say like the, these measuring techniques have been around for over a hundred years with the French radiesthesist. I mean, even like finding water, all of that is done with these techniques. So for me, they're really much more science because often you get, uh, you know, you get the comment that you're using a pendulum and people think that you're mentally asking questions, but it's all about, about this resonance. And yeah, I really like that. And as Holland was saying, the centering force, I like to, I like what Ibrahim Karim uses. And he, he says, if you have a balance that's out of, you know, that's out of balance, uh, quantitative science is like, let's add more weight here till it's back into balance while the qualitative is like hey let's move the center and and everything is is back in balance so yeah thank you holland for uh giving us an introduction um, uh, yes hey, thanks nico all right let's shift to you john um john head has um some experience with the hawkins consciousness scale and he's gonna introduce that for us and um yeah let's talk a little bit about what that is john Okay. Um, so I've been doing muscle testing for a while. And um, 
the Hawkins scale is a measurement system based on a logarithmic curve that quantifies where your thoughts are in a consciousness layer and where, how that resonates. And it goes from zero to a thousand with um, God consciousness being a thousand in this scale. Buddha consciousness, Christ consciousness is above the 600s. Most people are in the 200s, and that's normally in the lower emotions. And the scale has every single emotion sort of mapped in it. It makes it really quite interesting to be able to use that numbering system to know where things are. And so uh, Tiller even uses that with his power of an intention work. He uses the Hawkins consciousness scale to validate at what layer of consciousness is this intention actually working at? No matter how I word it, he always says, I always checked it against the Hawkins consciousness scale. But let me give you a little feedback on, on Hawkins. He wrote a book called Power Versus Force that Sam Walton called it the most important book he ever read. And it was teaching muscle testing. And Hawkins was originally an MD. We had a friend that was a DC chiropractor he used muscle testing to evaluate the muscles in a project called Touch for Health back in the late 70s, early 80s. They used muscle testing to isolate one muscle to see if this muscle was overstimulated or understimulated so they could isolate those muscles and wake them up. And that was a technique I used for a number of years. But the muscle testing, when you talked about different things, you can ask it of the body when you isolate the muscles. But with muscle testing, you can also ask a question. And with muscle testing, you can get a yes or a no. I started off doing the little finger ones, had somebody do the arm one. And now I'm just where I push down on this finger with this finger. And now I've gotten to where I can just sense it. And when I started working with biogeometry and pendulums, so I've done pendulums before, but biogeometry takes you to a whole nother level because you begin to realize that actually the shape and the color of the pair of the pendulum affects the results because they're tuned to something. And you have to use a neutral pendulum and a neutral pendulum, essentially a plexiglass or a glass ball on a string, no color, transparent, one shape, not shaped. And you that's the most neutral pendulum you can use. So when we start looking at using this with the consciousness scale, I can ask you any questions. What's this paragraph of this book? read and Hawkins talked about he would go through each paragraph and make sure it was above 500 before he finished that paragraph and then he would go through the entire book and what's this chapter rate at and so we've done this with the project for the lakes trying to find out because we're trying to check it on some of the biogeometry methods and there's good ways to do that but I feel, still think that well, it has a little bit of a skill in understanding the biogeometry tools to make things um, a cleaner result. It's just like the first time you practice any sort of a craft, you're not real good at it to start. But with muscle testing, it's sort of an innate skill in our bodies. And it's really about learning to trust our bodies. And someone that talked about muscle testing said it's God's connection to us and it gets past the brain. And so when we do this, we're working with the body, which is of uh, source and not the brain, which is the learned self. And so it does bypass all of that. So when we started working, you had a question, I could see. Did you have a question? Uh, me? No, I'm good. I, 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 I did realize that I missed the opportunity to introduce you as eloquently as I did Holland. And, uh, <laughs> you know, well, I here's think, John. I think part of, yeah, I know, right? I apologize for that. I think part of it is Holland and I go back like 10 years and, you know, John, you just showed up in my life um, less than a year ago and just some, yeah. some close to a year ago. And, you know, what I, one of the things I just adored about you as soon as I met you is that you're constantly measuring inside of our conversations. So we'd just be talking about anything and you'd be, you'd be checking the truthfulness of that through your body and your flow. And, I think that that's like the the highest place to live from. Like when somebody is tuned into their own intuition and their connection to their higher self and they're, and they're measuring and validating all the time, it doesn't leave a lot of room for the ego. It, it leaves a lot of room for, for flow 
And I just, I just adore that about you. So when you, when you started by saying that you've been doing muscle testing for a little while, I laughed, you know, you've, you've been doing like, you know, decades and, and, you know, tons of measurements and four of them at least. Yeah. Yeah. So, so John is really deeply experienced and, you know, he, he has kind of come close to the cosmic tower project because he had a background with the EES systems. And when he was able to start experiencing the difference between the two, he shifted his attention over. He's not fully away from EES systems, but he's he's great at talking about the contrast. So I just want to point out to people, if anybody's in a dialogue about looking at both, John's the person to get in touch with, and we're happy yep. to uh, connect. Yeah, I'd be to happy him. to. But I, I just really appreciate, like, I, I kind of adopted you as like a, a big brother um, kind of figure as soon as we met. And it's it's my comfort with how much you measure life. So I, I apologize for not getting that out at the beginning, but it's it's there no, every right. time I see you. <laughs> well, I know my name. You said John. I figured it was me. <laughs> well, the, the thing about trying to find that path of truth Sometimes the truth isn't comfortable. Uh, here's an example. So I'm muscle testing. I just got out of a 48 EE system with a friend of mine for a grand opening of the event uh, where I was scheduled to speak. And we're going out and having dinner afterwards. And my friend says, let me buy you a dessert. I don't normally eat desserts in restaurants. Uh, I have my ice cream fetish, but that's a whole other thing. When you make it yourself, it's sort of good. Um, but that I said, yes, I can, I muscle test. I can have a dessert. Great. And I, and I picked the dessert. Oh yeah, that's dessert. Muscle test strong. Great. I'm good. I go home. I have so many stomach cramps. I can't believe it. I'm going, what's going on? You told me I could eat it. He says, well, you really, you know, you really shouldn't even ask the question. You know, you're not supposed to do this. <laughs> so we had to <laughs> remind you <laughs> in no uncertain terms not to do this. Okay, because then I muscle tested the result and said, was this in my eyes? Good, yes. Then I was able to get my guides to share that information with me. And so... That's beautiful. So one of the things we're doing with the project to keep the left brain out of the way, or the left brain thought I could eat dessert, is we're starting to abstract what we're measuring from the measurement process. And I learned this working with uh, Dr. Al put off and Paul Smith, a couple of people that are involved in the uh, Stanford CIA remote project back in the day for the CIA. And uh, Dr. Putoff is one of the people that put that together for him. And he says, yeah, you've got to abstract it. They can't know what they're looking at or it influences the answer. And so the other day I was working with Mike and we, we were measuring them and I did a printout and it's black and white. And so I got different numbers than Mike got when we were using the Hawkins scale. But okay, there's a number of reasons. I'm not as connected to those bodies of water as he, so there might be a, a filter. And so Mike and I did an experiment that I thought was great. And he just says, okay, I'm going to tune into them. And then you measure once I'm connected. Mm. And through empathic connection, I could sense when he connected and then I got numbers that more in line with his. My numbers were roughly 30 to 50 lower, sometimes 45 lower than the numbers when he was connected to the legs uh, versus me trying to connect to a black and white photo of the leg. I didn't spend enough time going deep. I was just saying, oh, let me measure, right? It was a mind thing. But when I went into that space with him, and got clear and was in a space of observing versus analyzing. I got the numbers and did more in line with this. And we were above 500 consciousness and including 600 on some of them. So the lakes are definitely responding to, to the cosmic towers and their engagement. That's for sure. That's beautiful. Thank you for tying it to the project and helping us see how that connects do you have anything else you want to share before we move to the Boba scale with uh, Theo? Uh, no, I mean, I just think it really gets into, um, as you said, getting clear and shutting down the left brain. 
the left brain is what gets in the way, and I work with somebody today. And they were all upset, and I said, well, shut down the left brain. And he knew how to do that because he's a serious meditator, and he did. Well, oh, all the emotions are gone. <laughs> I feel at peace. What's What happened? I said, well, you're just back to you. So, That's anyway. fantastic. Well, it's beautiful that we're we're um, raising this consciousness as a community and having this dialogue. But thank you for what you've just contributed and for your participation so far. And and uh, yeah, let's see, um, community. We we still have opportunity for questions here as these uh, technologies are being revealed. So if you have anything that you want to ask, I see there's some activity in the chat. I'm not monitoring all that because I'm keeping an eye on the discussion. But if other people can weave those questions into the dialogue. That's welcome. Nico, do you have anything before I um, slide over to Theo? Uh, let, let's go to Theo and we, we can circle back on the questions later. Maybe that will become clear as other people talk. Okay, I'll take great. Be before you go to uh, Theo's uh, part, uh, can I uh, make a quick comment? So basically, uh, from my personal experience uh, working with John, it looks like uh, to me now, after we spent so so many hours and uh, weeks together discussing that the muscle test, uh, if you learn muscle testing, basically it's your entry point into the measurement uh, techniques. And I just want to show everyone uh, the book, which I keep uh, from many years ago. It's called The Art of the Self-Muscle Testing. It's uh, uh, 70 pages a uh, relatively short uh, book. So if you think you are interested in this, probably it's the good way to start with reading this this small uh, volume of wisdom, I would say. That's great. Thanks for contributing that, Mike. Um, so you guys have known Theo for about a decade and um, we met because he bought every structured water device I offered for sale. And, um, you know, he just kept showing up and you know, he called himself a biohacker when we met. And then I introduced him to Holland and they got off into some subtle energies and he has just transformed over the last couple of years. He just, he's, uh, we think of him more as a health researcher now. And, you know, really biohacker to health researcher is going from, um, I'm concerned about me and my health and my body and making sure I'm okay to um, my body's connected to this environment. And so um, I have to understand the whole and the influences that are out there. So a really fun thing that we've been doing over the last couple of months is Theo's just super passionate about measuring subtle energies these, way, these days. He's got a great mind and an insatiable curiosity. So he just keeps chewing on it. And so when some people were coming in and buying their cosmic towers that we had in common, Theo did measurements on their properties before they got their towers and then after. And so we've had this dialogue emerging and, you know, to, to have him introduce the Bova scale is a privilege, but also just to name that he's, he's got a much wider thing. And I keep encouraging him to become a consultant and somebody who's available to people for, for hire to um, help them understand subtle energy. So he's got all that background and, um, and for, for this conversation, we'll focus on the BOVA scale and what it is and how it, it can be used in relationship to this project. So th thanks for being here, Theo. Thanks for having me. I uh, am learning a lot. I've wanted to learn about the Hawkins scale for a long time. So that was really cool. And um, yeah, you introduced me to Holland. I interviewed her on EMF and, and something she said really struck me. She said, you know, you can block uh, EMF all you want, but you'll still be exposed to the scalar or informational waves uh, that uh, your cells don't like. And that was kind of my gateway into subtle energy because it was a practical application of subtle energy. I grew up on a farm in Minnesota, so you know it's practical utilitarian things really appeal to me. And um, you know, Holland's mentored me over the years, and um. I use her approach, which is everything, you know, I just take what works for me and kind of discard the rest. I'm not dogmatic to any one system. Um, she introduced me to the measurement um, methodology that biogeometry uses, which was really cool as using it to measure rooms to start with, um, which put me on a path to learn other methods of measurement. And I came across the BOVA scale, which 
it's really neat. You know, it's over a hundred years old and it was designed by a French uh, physician who is trying to determine the vitality or life force energy of the food he was feeding his patients. He treated chronically ill people. And uh, he was a well-known uh, radiesthetist at the time in France. And he had a patient who was an engineer um, who had tuberculosis and they worked on this project together and they created something incredible. It was the first subtle energy uh, measurement scale uh, and it's still in use today widely. I mean, in, in um, some health supplements in Germany and Austria and France, they will put the bovis score of the food or supplement on the label, um, just like you'd see on the label over here. Um, and what's neat about the bovis scale is that it is based on um, a natural resonant frequency that is good for humans. So on a bovis scale, it goes, the old one, it goes from 500 to 10,000 and it's measured in bovis units and 6,500 is considered neutral. So 6,500 below, below 6,500 things take energy from you and above 6,500 they give energy to you. And uh, 6,500 corresponds to angstroms. So it's, it's actually uh, the wavelength of beneficial infrared light. It's what our cells resonate. Uh, so that's, that's where they got that measurement and the rest of the scale is based on that. And that was kind of their breakthrough um, in designing this scale. So um, just to show you real quick, here's a very basic one that I printed out um, that I use because it's very quick. You can see this one goes from 500 to 14,000. This is a fan chart. So you put the pendulum here and then you, you specify what you're testing and it'll, it'll swing and it'll it'll pick one of these and i'll go like that what's really funny about the cosmic tower project because i was measuring things with the bovis scale and biogeometry scale all the time because i own a supplement company and so i'm really really stringent on my um physical quality of my supplements that i have made and sell uh, but also their energetic quality. So I test every batch of raw ingredients I get from manufacturers. Um, and the BOVA scales is one of the things I use. And so it was this really neat practical application where I could test these different samples and say, whoa, this one is, you know, 13,000 BOVIS units. And the previous one was 9,000 BOVIS units. I'm going to go with this supplier for this particular blend. Um, and I just thought that was just so cool. You know, I mean, what's not cool about that? It's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you can look at all the lab tests you want, but as Holland told me one time, she said, you know, um, when you look at the ingredient label of some of these supplements you get in the mail, you'd expect them to feel better, but they just don't. And it's because of what they've been exposed to either during manufacturing process or shipping process or, or what have you. So for the Cosmic Tower project, it was interesting measuring people's houses. Most people's houses fall into the 7,000 or 8,000 bovis units range, um, which is above neutral, but not by much. Um, and if you think about the type of people that are attracted to Cosmic Towers, they probably have a little bit of a higher vibration anyway. Um, and so that's kind of, it's, it's raising the vibration of the house. So it's above neutral, which is good. Um, What's interesting is that over time, after they get the cosmic tower, it just keeps raising. So, you know, after a few days, it'll go from 8,000 to, you know, 12,000 or so. Um, and after a month on this particular scale, it stops at 14,000 and <laughs> it went off the chart. And this is for the last <laughs> three homes that I've measured. So I had to get a new bovis scale fan chart which this one goes over twenty thousand, um and there are bovis charts that now go um over thirty thousand because the consciousness of the planet has been increasing as we left the piscean age and we're, we're now entering the aquarian age and and so the consciousness has has risen and so they've therefore had to increase the the bovis chart and um, I really like the Bovis fan charts because they are so fast and easy to use. Um, in my case, I mean, it takes me seconds um, to get a measurement. 
um, and they're they're really strong. And you know, using Holland's approach of many different techniques, um, I use other things to verify that measurement. So I'll do the biogeometry scale, and here's one that probably most people on this call haven't seen. Um, this is called a geometer, um, and this is from France. And it's used with something called a Lecker antenna. And this one's folded at the moment, but this is kind of the peak um, European um, radiesthesia device. And so you can see this has numbers on it. And um, these numbers are centimeters, but they correspond to various subtle energy qualities. So I'll follow up with this and it always verifies um, what the... Um, what the bovis chart indicated to me um and it's just it's just really neat to be able to do this stuff i mean even if you did it just for yourself for the types of food or supplements you're putting in your body uh you can just rapidly test uh you know anything and for me it's added a lot of value and and benefit to my life um and uh I just love doing it. I mean, it's, it's a hobby of mine. I, it, I just, I do it all the time. So that's, that's a, a short introduction to the Bobus chart and a little bit about the Lecker antenna there. That's great. I appreciate your, uh, your passion for measurement. People want to know where to find you and to know about your supplements. So be sure to put something in the chat. Okay. Sure. And, um, I'm going to jump over to Tara and um, you guys, I met Tara Oh gosh, 2004 or five, three, 2003. Em Emily was, Em was 11 months old. Oh my gosh. Yep. And I, I was, um, I mean, when I, when I heard Tara's voice, I just, I just heard love. Like this woman is a breathwork practitioner and she, she breathes. And what I hear is I hear love coming out of, out of her mouth. And I remember her telling me a, a story way back then around, going to a friend's house for an evening and she walked in and, and she knew everybody there well. And um, she said, all right, who's got the anxiety? Cause I know this isn't mine and somebody's got it. And um, she had that level of sensitivity 20 years ago. And so she's just kept honing her trade. And so I would say that um, Tara is as natural a person as I know, meaning she takes a breath, she centers herself and she allows the flow of love and truth to come through. And so Tara, tell us a little bit about the way you measure things and your interaction with this project so that people can just have something different than these methodologies that have been published. This is, this is what's possible. Each one of us has a version of ourselves that's like this. So Tara, let, let's, let's hear a little bit about yours, please. Okay. So when I was invited into the project, um, the first, uh, the first wave was curiosity um, because they were talking about biogeometry and measuring, and I had never, I had never uh, approached the energy by by measuring it. I always was feeling it, um, assessing the flow, but never really measuring. So, um, so I said yes simply because I'm dedicated to learning more all the time. And when it's from this community, um, I, as Patrick said, we've known each other for a really long time. And so when Patrick invited me into the community via Lavanya, I was like, oh yeah, I can feel the love. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm in. And so when the Cosmic Tower showed up, um, and that's a whole nother story, but I ended up with a, a Cosmic Tower here. And um, when that showed up, I was blown away by the impact that it had on me, me personally, but also my household. And, um, and again, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just going by, by feeling. And so then being asked to, um, become a part of the lakes and lakes of light, um, project again, an opportunity for me, the reason I said yes to it was that it was an opportunity to uh, nurture my relationship with the cosmic tower. I find that um, when I sit with my cosmic tower on a regular basis and in that state of love and connection, that um, the communication just becomes clearer and clearer and the messages that I'm receiving from that love source energy becomes clearer and clearer. So honestly, for, for a few months, life had whisked me away 
this project brought me back to daily communication with my tower, um, with the cosmic tower. And not only that, it brought me into daily consciousness of connecting with the um, bodies of water around me. So um, Michael asked me to make sure I asked permission um, to ask permission of the, you know, to choose a body of water to connect with regularly. And so literally less than 500 yards out the window here is a river. So I connected with the river and I got a no. And I was like, what, <laughs> what? why? And so I, I didn't get the answers to why, but I got the firm no. And then there's a beautiful marsh wetland area. And I said, how about you? And I got kind of a wobbly sure and then I connected with um a lake that I or a pond that I walk um that I go walking at regularly and the exuberance of when I connected into the energy of that pond simply by taking a breath putting my roots down and and just loving it <laughs> and and asking to to connect it was like jumping up and down so the, the energy was so exuberant I'm like well this is the body of water, obviously. The, the, the energy was so playful and light. And yes, I want to be a part of this. And so what, what I do is I daily, I, I sit um, in my meditation spot, which is right in front of the tower. I connect to my, my tower's nickname is Joe. I connect with Joe, short for Joviel. I connect with Joe and I ask her to amplify the love energy and the connection between me and the pond and source energy. And I simply go into a state of gratitude um, for this body of water and the beauty that it offers and the sustenance and the, the life enhancing properties of it. And I just stay in this meditative state of gratitude. Um, and then and then I check in with Mike and I'm like, how are we doing? Because Mike, <laughs> Mike is my point person. And so just on a daily basis from my home, I connect with the lake and then, um, or the pond. And then I do my best to get there at least once a week, if not several times a week, where I sit at the edge of the pond in a state of gratitude and just um, listen and communicate with and connect with simply by slowing myself down connecting that breath and, and asking that permission to connect and, um, and receive and give. So being in that reciprocal um, experience. And then Mike gives us reports on how, how the energy levels are um, with all the different bodies of water. And yeah, so that's how it started. And then um, I was introduced to the um, the Hawkins scale and realized that I didn't know that it was the Hawkins scale, but I have been using it that I've had power versus force on my bookshelf since 2006 and have been using that scale um, in a very non-scientific way, um, but very familiar with that. And so ha it has been so fun to use my skills with muscle testing to now start to measure um, and I, can I, Mike, are you comfortable with me sharing about our experience the Absolutely. other day? Please right? go so, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so I use muscle testing in the breath work to, um, assess where people are in their breath work session. Um, and so then applying it to just in the past month, applying it to, tuning in to where, where am I, where am, am I, uh, where's the, the lakes vibration. And so the other day, Mike's like, I'm going to sit, he sent me the same, um, the same images that John had and mine came out in color, um, but they're small. So we were muscle testing using these and I too, John, I don't know if you've heard this story yet, but I too had lower the um the lower numbers about about the same that you did about 40 to 50 uh points less and so mike was telling me about what you did and doing the uh, you know using mike as the proxy tuning in because he's familiar with all of these 
bodies of water. And I asked him not to tell me which one I was testing. I said, don't, don't tell me, I don't wanna know. I want it to be a blind test. And so we, we were muscle testing and the numbers did increase just like your experience. And what I found so fascinating and what was very validating was um, being able to, without knowing what property I, or power spot I was tuning into, just having that accurate, um, having the accuracy and that when we hit Stonehenge, it just went right off the charts. I'm like, whoa, we, this is definitely a power center that we're on. And to have those um, numbers be accurate, not knowing what body of water we were testing. I found that fascinating. It was, it was, um, it was just very validating that the muscle testing tools and um, that they, that they're working, especially not knowing the body of water. Now, what I found most fascinating and Patrick, if I'm talking too much, just give me the, cause I'm yeah. so, it's so yeah. exciting. <laughs> Good. Um, this, this next part is really the blending of you into Mike and the results. So, you know, Mike, feel free to be in the conversation more here and we'll just, this is where we're going next. It's perfect. Okay. Taylor, please go ahead. It's, 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 it's so, so much fun uh, looking at you on your excitement. Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> so what I noticed is that when I tested the lake that I'm connected to, the numbers were much higher. And so I, I thought, oh, this, some, this must be because I love the lake so much that, so when I was testing it, knowing that it was the body of water that I'm connected to, my numbers were higher than what Mike was getting. But then I said to myself, okay, this is because of the, the connection I have. It's my own personal joy and love and consciousness bleeding into or, or melding in with the, the results. So when we did the blind one, I didn't know that I was testing the body of water that I was connected to, but had the same results. So even though I didn't consciously know in here that I was testing the lake that I love so much, my energy and the lake's energy knew. And again, it bumped the numbers up by about a hundred <laughs> because there's so much joy and appreciation. So in all of that, I'm curious, and it's activated a, scien a scientific part of me, I'm now even more curious as to how to get the most accurate measurements, being that we are human and we have our consciousness that comes into play. And I know very little bit of, uh, very little of this, and, and I'm starting, so I'm excited to um, continue to play with the Hawkins scale and um, the Bovis scale is the next one in line. Um, and since I just saw Theo's uh, chart um, and John has shown that chart and Mike, so I wanna get one of those next, but I'm super excited. I, I know very little about the, the measurement and yet my passion for connecting with the cosmic tower, connecting to the waters, connecting to, the, to raising the vibration and bringing that harmonious energy to the planet, um, I'm, I'm not allowing my lack of understanding of the bio biogeometry or the measurement um, to keep me from fully engaging in the project. So there's my part. Thank you so much. That, that's beautiful. I think, you know, part of the reason we do this conversation as a community is one of the ways we up our confidence in the topic and the results is by crowdsourcing it. And so when you when you look at John smiling while you're telling your story, it's like, you know, the two of you had the same experience and it feels really good in the realm of subtle energy measurement to find out that in a blind kind of setup, somebody else had the same experience you did. It's like, wow, you guys are you guys are tapping into something that's very real. So we appreciate you being part of the crowd. So, Mike, your baby's all grown up. Look what you've done. We um you started playing with water and got a got an inspiration, and here we are. So um, now that you've seen it kind of unfold, what would you like to add to the conversation? Of course, you have some results to share that that um, that you've been keeping track of, but anything else? Like it's wide open for you. Oh, uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, well, first of all, it's my uh, turn to say thank you to you because getting back seven to eight years ago. I still remember the moment of time when I uh, purchased the first portable uh, water structuring unit. And uh, three days after that completely changed my life. So I guess this was the starting point of all of the projects. Uh, so 
<laughs> uh, the world, the center prize, uh, Lavonia community. Now the Cosmic Towers is really the place to be. Uh, well, well, that's great. I, I would suggest that it's water that's guiding us. You know, I, I just wanted to sell water filters and have recurring revenue and go windsurfing. And life was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So we're going to we're going to have you learn about structured water and, and go on a completely different, way more spiritual journey. So in, in a way, I just feel like we uh, we just keep unfolding where water is taking us. Absolutely. Yes, I totally agree with you. And I just want to, uh, before I forget, I just want to follow up on uh, Tara's part of her experience and basically share my moment of fascination, uh, being fascinated by the results, by the measurements results after uh, Tara announced that she successfully found the body of water and uh, was able to uh, to get a big yes. So the day after that, uh, well, I sort of opened up and used all of my biogeometry tools including this, this thing. Uh, and interesting, so uh, the following day, basically, I measured the all qualitative levels uh, for this new body, body of water. And uh, uh, the whole uh, energetic level of physical and vital plane has been lit. Uh, so, and basically the idea came to mind immediately. So that's a good result. So it's a good, uh, good tendency, a good trend. Uh, let's see what happens uh, uh, tomorrow. And I was sort of, thinking that if any, uh, if every day we will get the next level by level and within uh, say seven days, uh, that would be a perfect uh, power spot uh, presenting itself in this body of water. And the following day, uh, the next uh, next plane, basically the next uh, level, energetic level of this body of water uh, has been lit. So suddenly I was able to measure that uh, the whole emotional plane was was in there. And the day after that, uh, the next level was lit. And the day after next, the next day. So basically within a few days, we reached the sort of the level of energetic level, which can be found uh, in, uh, in almost all power spots. So it was an interesting and playful experience. Uh, so you project a thought and uh, basically uh, the body of water plays with you, the way you sort of thinking about. That's kind of very interesting uh, discovery. Um, so what, what else, Pato? What, what else? We, we, we can talk uh, for hours and hours. So what is there any specific uh, points you would like me to, to well, share? Well, I, I think, you know, one of the things that we're, we're looking for is for people to begin engaging with their towers and rivers and lakes, right? And to realize that that makes a difference. And so um, you sharing a little bit about, I think you have a rule for engagement around permission and sharing sharing that and um, and how you would encourage people who are participating, who might be at that on the spectrum of measurement back at that, no, I don't do it yet. Um, let's, let's provide them some breadcrumbs. Okay, okay. So basically uh, to briefly describe the, the process, if, if someone is interested to join this, uh, process uh, steps can be easy. Uh, so do the self check on 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 your intention. Uh, why are you interested in doing that? Uh, find the uh, nearby body of water. Introduce yourself and your intent to this body of water. So basically, uh, ask for permission and uh, describe what you are planning to do. Uh, if you are getting a strong yes. Uh, by the muscle test, so you have to learn how to do the muscle test, apparently. Uh, you can basically invent your own technique or use anything you have already uh, heard and learned, maybe a little bit more. Invite your cosmic tower, if you have one, to help uh, to amplify this energy and to play with you and your newly acquired friend, which is the body of water. Measure, observe what happens regularly and share your findings with the community. And we'll be happy to help to share our advice uh, to make measurements for you if you uh, if you need at this point. So I think that would be the good starting point. That's great. And, and as people in the community start to ask questions, either by raising your hands now or by typing them in the chat, um, everybody on the panel, everybody who's spoken, everybody in the community, your, your voices are welcome. 
Um, so feel free to um, to weigh in if if a question particularly speaks to you. Um, the, the question that just came in is, um, you know, I understand we're talking about lakes and rivers, right? That's where we've we've uh, gained our our knowledge so far on this. But what would you say about connecting with seawater? And um, would there be any differences there, or is that the same? Uh, let me jump in with answering this question. So uh, when you talk about body of water, uh, well, first of all, uh, you need to make sure you treat uh, those bodies equally. So basically, our measurements show that our lakes uh, are much more conscious entities in comparison to us. So be respectful. Uh, so those... Uh, this potential, which basically resides in any body of water, basically is a powerful thing. So you don't want to violate the boundaries of this being. So make sure you approach them with respect and uh, share your uh, sh sh share your intention. Uh, I wouldn't recommend to do this with the uh, oceans or seas from the very beginning because it's probably too powerful. And uh, most likely, I'm just guessing, uh, you will get no at the beginning because uh, you have to uh, to earn the trust uh, those entities or those beings are reading your intentions your levels of consciousness so and uh, in general uh, not everyone at this point is ready to engage in this project so you have probably to do small steps first uh, make sure you are comfortable make sure you uh, you get uh, yes uh, from uh, anybody of what you would like to approach uh, mm. My recommendation would be uh, uh, to start with the small local ponds, lakes, maybe. Uh, it took me uh, three, almost three, one, uh, three months to get a yes answer from the uh, local stream, uh, which is located in eastern Massachusetts. So again, I was working with the uh, two lakes at this point, and uh, every time I asked, I, get, I, I was getting no, 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 no. And so someday um, it, it pops up as, as a yes. So that's the technique uh, to be used and make sure you sort of don't uh, override uh, the free will of those beings. I, I really appreciate your honor for the bodies of water and their consciousness and also your persistence to, to receive the no and just come back and ask again and come back and ask again. Um, hey, Patrick, can I yeah, take a Oh, please. Yes, okay. perfect. Uh, I, I realized then um, the focus here, you know, through Mike and, and you, certainly many of us has been water. Um, and I wonder if it's appropriate to widen that out a bit. For instance, when I work with feng shui, I'm working with uh, all the five elements. Um, so that's fire, earth, uh, metal, water, and wood. Um, and it might not be a body of water that is the most accessible or even the most relevant for an individual. Um, for instance, I have a whole love affair with my orange tree out the window here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And I've had some amazing experiences in consciousness with this tree quite inadvertently, you know, just kind of slipping into its world and you know, sort of a little shamanic moment in the middle of my afternoon when, one day, you know, where I learned an enormous amount in a very short period of time. And it, it might be that an individual has a connection with a particular kind of bird or their vegetable garden, a tree, or um, part of a mountain. Um, and, you know, I imagine that, you know, the cosmic tower could, you know, it's connecting with life, you know, so whatever that life expression is that an individual feels the most, most drawn to interact with, that m might be the most natural way, you know, to experience this as well, you know, and you don't have to measure things. Me measuring is a like a wonderful tool. And I think it's also very validating for our minds that want to know, you know, something is real. Um, but we are far more sensitive than any measuring device, far more sensitive. And so, you know, any way that we can simply include in our own felt sense experience, you know, maybe we don't understand it yet. You know, but if we don't toss it out because we don't know what to do with, you know, a sensation or um, some awareness, you know, then eventually it, it comes to make sense to us, you know, as we develop our kind of internal language of interaction with the world around us. 
And so I just, you know, really wanted to not have people feel at all like they have to use some kind of measurement system. It's it's fascinating and, and wonderful, but you know, ultimately it's our own consciousness that's getting developed here. Well, I think that's one of the things we, that unites us as a community is the belief of empowerment of each individual and that we're all here with our unique path and that if we can just do our best to navigate that authentic path, like that's the perfect one for us. So, you know, if anybody is navigating their path and getting yeses that feel aligned and have the experience of being in the flow with life, <laughs> forget the rest of this, just stay stay right there. Um, there's no need to to step anywhere, but right there. Um, Helen, do you want to extend any further um, in what you're saying about it extending to to beyond bodies of water to the body of water that we are? Like, do you want to offer a comment about about um, whether um, what about our own bodies, which are made up mostly of water? Well, you know, there's certainly all these energetic measurement systems that you can apply outwardly, you can apply inwardly. There's there's that, but I think. Um, you know, you can pick any part of your body it's, that is permeated with water, but just the energy that we are, you can interact with that. You can communicate with that just the way that you might with a river or a stream or a tree. And um, the respect, I think, that comes comes through that, you know, for ourselves and and the extraordinary beings that we are is is quite wonderful. I mean, there's just so much promise in, in what you're saying and connecting with our own body of water that way. And the intelligence that's there is profound. So. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. And I, you know, I'll go back to one of the things Nico said at the beginning, which is that we are, we are in the earth. We are of the earth. We're not separated from it. We're not on it. We are, we are made up of it. And, um, and so whether we're applying our focus to a river or a bird or our own body, it's all from the same origin and it has the same. Um, yeah. Sentence. I think there's also a gate back and forth. You know, if you're connecting more with the water out there, it's easier to connect with the water in here. Mm -hmm. You know, any, any kind of particular element that we have an affinity for or a curiosity about no matter where you start communicating with it, if it's outward or or inward, it it opens up that resonance outwardly as well. Yeah, I um I loved what Tara shared about um meditating every day with her tower and just opening herself up to the connection with this water and just sending gratitude. I mean, I can do that. <laughs> I'd like I'd love to just piggyback off on this one afternoon sitting by uh, sitting by the pond, I was asking, why did the river say no? Why, why didn't these other bodies of water like want in on this? And um, so I was listening to the answer and it, and she has a personality. She's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's all connected. Like, <laughs> think about the watershed. Like I'm saying yes to this. You're saying yes to this. So every Every tree root, every um, other, you know, all the, all the uh, waterways downstream from where I am, like we're all interconnected. Don't worry, just be in this energy here, and it's having its ripple effect out into the world. And so, I, very similar to to Holland, what you were just saying, it's like whether you're you're starting in in here or out there, it's all interconnected, and it's raising that um, that harmonious is putting that harmonious energy out there into the world. So, yeah, I got to the, the pond is on the same page as all of us. It's <laughs> uh, it's all bags of water and different, different types, right? It's, it's, it's really amazing. Um, okay. Mike, this might be a question that's best for you is how close distance wise does the body of water need to be to the person doing the measurements? Can this be done remotely? Uh, yes, there is no limitation as far as the distance uh, because you can measure uh, this body of water based on, on its energetic witness. Uh, that's the way biogeometry describes it. So basically you can take a picture or you can, uh, if you can use the biogeometry tools, you can basically use the sample of water from this, uh, from this lake. Uh, so... Uh, 
the only thing uh, is that if someone decides to sort of engage uh, yourself into this project, it's worth having this uh, body of water nearby because it's important to have personal connection as Tara described. And I also found that uh, when you regularly revisit those bodies of water, you're basically better connected. So basically you experience more uh, excitement. You can communicate easily. Uh, so basically you, you're having much more fun rather than finding something in the, uh, on the Africa continent, for example, and trying to work with this, uh, this body of water. So I think we should probably be starting uh, with the nearby local uh, bodies of water, which you can regularly visit. That's great. I might have a suggestion. Please. So um, I did a lot of work with Rife Remote, and um, that works quite well. So you could send us little bitty, you know, quarter ounce vials of water, just wrap it up in a nice container to ship it, you know, protect it from x rays and all the stuff they do in shipping. And you can just number them one through whatever. For the locations and we can test actually on the water and if you pack it correctly muscle testing it's not going to decrease the energetic connection beautiful thank you for that john um so mike i think you asked me last week um so what do we do at the end of the call and i said well that's not next to figure out today so we'll just put that question off until it's next so it seems like that question is next now. So um, here we are. So what's your vision for where you'd like to see this project go in the future? Uh, well, we have uh, all option, options uh, open to us. So everything is possible. That's my uh, point of view. And if we have members of the community who would like to join our team, team of eight at this point, uh, for bodies of water and for people, uh, I would love to see it expanding to 16, 32, and uh, on and on, if we can do it, if we like to do it, if uh, we are capable to do it, but I'm sure we can. So it's just in our hands uh, to expand. So let's right. let's give it a try and let's let's see what happens. That's beautiful. So you you're inviting members of the community to be in communication with you to be added to the team. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be it could be the first step. Could be the first step, and after that, uh, depending on how big is the interest, how big big is the impact, uh, we will decide what would be the best and the most effective way to coordinate our tests activities. Maybe we we will decide to subdivide it to the small teams, uh, like teams of three people plus three bodies of water, and uh, coordinate. So basically, creating the network of regional networks, possibly. Uh, of the project participants. Well, so. that sounds amazing. You know, between the opportunity to um, bring together people who uplift themselves as a community and bring together a cosmic tower network that holds a certain vibration and bring together the, the cooperation of the natural elements and the different types of water, which is everything. Um, this, is a, this is a really amazing project that has started. So um, if you're comfortable, Mike, please put your email in the in the chat, and um, people can can contact you directly and and um, interface with you around the next next steps. And you know, before I um, ask you, Nico, whether you have any closing comments, um, John, uh, somebody's asking about protecting something and shipping. What materials? Maybe you can ha uh, either handle that verbally real quick if you know. Or we can, uh, or you can chat with Shira. Yeah, so I'll send some fabric uh, to Mike. So it's uh, EMF blocks at eighty-five dB. So uh, you 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 can't get a cell phone signal in it. So we just protect it. I mean, you can also protect it energetically by wrapping a cocoon around it. You know, we have electronic, uh, electric, energetic cocoon around it, and you can protect it that way as well. Yep, we we recently, we're work in the energetic layer. We're going to work in the physical layer. That sounds, that sounds great. We <laughs> we recently talked about inside the Cosmic Tower project that our initial containers that were shipped from Europe were wrapped in that type of um, uh, process through the people in Europe, and um, the containers came here very uh, safely and um, did really really well. And so um, 
those types of things do work. Guys, um, Mike's um, email is in the chat for anybody that wants to copy and paste it. And um, if you're watching the recording later, um, you can email support at thewellnessenterprise.com and we'll be happy to um, connect you with Mike directly. Um, I, I do want to say on, on behalf of the Cosmic Tower Project as a whole that we're, um, as I'm sure you can all understand more deeply now, very grateful that this emerged from inside the community and very grateful for your, your leadership with it, Mike. And we want to put this out as an example of what we think the harmonic energy of the towers is doing in the world is it's it's causing us to come together just like this this is this is perfect so thank you thank you thank you and more please like feel the inspiration and your guidance and and please um engage us the way mike did and and we'll see where things want to go um nico we're just just up against the the end of our time here but um want to check in with you for any closing comments yeah, thank you, thank you, Peter. And I, I think it's a it's a good point. Like I see the cosmic towers. A lot of people think I get like a cure all. I just get a tower, and it will take care of everything for me. And now it's all I'm alive, and I don't have to do anything again. You know, sometimes uh, people just want like the easy way. But ultimately, I think what the cosmic tower network is really about is about us developing our own consciousness. And it's assisting us in in doing that and also taking some of the load off of our energetic system by creating a harmonious environment. But that's only step one. Then it's like bringing nature into your environment. Then it's still up to you. It's not all, you know, it's not all easy because a big part of getting to a higher vibration is letting go of lower vibrations, right, that we've held on to for so long so ultimately the cosmic towers are just here to help us in our own unfoldment but it's really is about us individually making the changes within letting go of what we're not and then also coming together as a community and whether that's the cosmic tower whether that's biogeometry or anything else i think it doesn't matter whatever works best for you because remember if you're setting that beautiful intention to a lake of water to a orange tree or whatever it is that beautiful intention also passes through your own body and your own water so you cannot separate one of the others so i think the cosmic towers are super excited to participate in that because they love it when we take responsibility for our own inner and outer environment and then assisting with that i think if you take one person with a beautiful intention and and add another person with that common intention the you know the sum is much greater than just the parts and i think that's what it is about in these times uh when we have all these challenges in our world and in our environment and i just see him as a catalyst for us to uh, be more of ourself and also to say like, yeah, we might have different opinions, but let's come together with what we all agree upon with our own unique way, which is that we all want a healthier environment uh, for all of us and, and for all living organisms on the planet. So in whatever way you want to do that, I mean, you have my permission <laughs> <laughs> to do it if you need that and i think it's it it's i was super excited because of that because that's the next step with the cosmic towers which is actively working with them and i know tara knows that when you work with your tower they're just so excited they're like yeah let's do it let's do it together and infinitely it just it just becomes instantly more powerful so i just want to thank everybody for their interest and curiosity around around this and yeah just keep following that um uh, thank you there's that playfulness on display again nico that's that's perfect you just can't hold it back i love that about you um panelists um thank you so much mike the inspiration everything that you all contributed today is such a beautiful community call and community we can't do this without all of us so it takes speakers and listeners and open hearts and people with questions and people who don't understand and people who do, it takes all of that to be us. So your presence here means the world to us. And we thank you so much for being a part of this project with us. It's such an honor to know you and engage in this way. And uh, we look forward to seeing what 
just grows out of life and blossoms through all of us. Um, but um, uh, may I mention one one more thing before we yes. disconnect? Yes. Uh, so basically, what a coincidence uh, today is uh, March 19th, I think. Uh, first of all, it's the astrological start of the spring, uh, basically the point of time where nature sort of takes a deep breath and sheds all of that. Uh, sleepiness uh, during the winter time. So I would like to say happy spring, everyone. And uh, let's see what comes out from this project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th thanks for sharing There's... that. And bring, bring <clears throat> that on. I'll be right to you, Theo. In bringing that honor, sometimes I step over the astrology things, but this date was chosen intentionally and I just forgot to talk about it. So thanks for bringing it back around, Mike. And, you know, today is a day of birth, and some say today is the start of the new year, and and um, all these seeds that we just planted are part of our new year together, what we've created. So pretty amazing. Theo? I just want to say uh, two quick things. Um, one, um, regarding the measuring and the cosmic towers, um, I learned how to map DAOs uh, using a camera and aura meter, and... Um, we we did that project uh, uh, you and I patter with um, measuring the one in Illinois and the one in Minnesota and if their fields connected uh, beyond what was stated by the manufacturer and they did and and um, it's you know it's one thing to see a Google map with a circle around them based on you know what they do but it's another thing to see you can actually see the energetic outline of how far the field goes out so i thought that was really cool and i'm looking forward to doing more of that and i had a direct message where somebody is asking what kind of pendulum is best for um getting started with as far as what's um neutral um you know effective and accurate and i referred them to uh holland's website but holland if you have a quick comment on that um that might be good to share um, the, the pendulum that's on my website is um, called an acupulsor spin tester, and it's like the most sensitive and accurate um, pendulum for a certain type of testing, um, which is, you, you know, you're asking a question of some sort, or you want to know what the energetic quality is of the field around you, whether it's fundamentally life supporting or not. The other type that um, biogeometry has is um, the, the pendulums are actually uh, tuned. Basically, there are dials on them that are tuned to each one of the different frequencies. And so the pendulum won't spin unless that frequency is present in the field around it. So it really depends upon the type of testing that somebody is doing. I go back, back and forth between, there, there we go, Nico was holding that up. Um, I go back and forth between the two because each one of them has has strengths. And yeah, and uh, the pulsar pendulum has, there are ways you can use it for as a healing device as well. So you get more, more for your, you know, what you have in a device, but anyway. And there's, there's the, uh, was holding up the, uh, the pulsar one too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, and the thing I like about that one too is, is that, and I've got mine, I'm never far away from it. Um, is that it doesn't cause the person who's doing any testing to resonate with any negative energies because that's a real downfall of many pendulums is that if you're testing something negative in the field, you're not protected from really responding to that as well. And so if it's adverse, you get kind of a hit and you have to recover from it. Um, this The pulsar pendulum never causes that. There Fantastic. All right, Theo, thanks for getting those uh, points in. Anybody else? All right, I think that's a wrap. Um, I'm going to uh, ask you all to uh, unmute and, and say goodbye. Thanks again for being here. It's um, wonderful to be with you as a community. Thank you, guys. As always. This Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Hi, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks for thank showing you. up. Thanks, everybody. Hi. Appreciate so you guys. So many thanks. Thank you. For attitude.